Energy is a tricky subject. No one knows exactly what energy is, but it is a quantity that every physical system has and is observed through how it's transferred. It's important to remember that energy can never be created or destroyed, only moved about, so that the total amount of energy must remain the same. This is called the conservation of energy and is a fundamental law of physics. We'll be looking at how energy is related to mechanics. Relax and you should get an intuitive feel for how it relates to everything. For what we're learning today, energy comes in two types, potential energy and kinetic energy. You might find it hard to tell them apart and that's totally normal, as they are essentially the same. The difference is only in how we measure them and how they relate to the system we're looking at. Potential energy is the energy of an object due to its position. Think of energy being stored in something because of where it is, and think of what the word potential means. There are many types of potential energy. Some you may come across are chemical potential energy, elastic potential energy, gravitational potential energy, electrical potential energy, and so on. Kinetic energy is the energy of an object due to its motion. Think of the energy something has because it's moving. A speeding car has more kinetic energy than a car parked on the side of the road. The word kinetic just refers to motion. The potential energy of an object can be turned into kinetic energy and vice versa through work. Energy is measured in joules, J. Let's have a look at what work is. Whenever one object transfers energy to another, work is done. If you want to move something, you have to do work on it. Does it remind you of forces? That's because they're related. Here's the equation for work. W equals FD, which reads work is equal to a force times a distance. So the amount of work you have to do is equal to how much force you need to move something and how far you need to move it. If James uses a force of 30 newtons to lift a watermelon sitting on the ground 3 meters straight up into the air, how much work does he do on the watermelon? W equals FD. So 30 newtons times 3 meters equals 90 joules. So James uses 90 joules of energy to lift the watermelon. The rate of work over time is called power. The equation for power is P equals W over T, which reads power is equal to the amount of work done divided by the time taken to do it. Power is measured in watts, which is the same as joules per second. So let's say James took 3 seconds to lift the watermelon. The power would be calculated by P equals W over T equals 90 joules divided by 3 seconds equals 30 joules per second, or 30 watts. The watermelon is now 3 meters above the ground. Due to gravity, the watermelon wants to fall. It has a specific amount of energy stored in it due to the gravitational pull of the earth and the watermelon's mass and position above the ground. This potential energy is gravitational potential energy. The equation for gravitational potential energy is delta E equals mgh, which reads the change in potential energy is equal to the mass of the object times gravitational acceleration times the height of the object from the ground. If the mass and or the height get bigger, the potential energy gets bigger. Remember g is the gravitational acceleration for an object near the Earth's surface and equals 10 meters per second per second. Let's say the watermelon is quite massive and weighs 3 kilos. We can find the potential energy due to Earth's gravity. Delta E equals mgh equals 3 kilos times 10 meters per second per second times 3 meters equals 90 joules. Hey, that's the same amount of energy that James used in lifting the watermelon in the first place. How curious. That's because the amount of work required to lift an object equals the amount of potential energy stored in the object after it's lifted. James fumbles and drops the watermelon. It does exactly what it wants to do, which is fall towards the ground. Because its potential energy depends on its position, and its position is decreasing, its potential energy is decreasing also. But remember the conservation of energy? The energy can't disappear, it has to go somewhere. The potential energy is turned into kinetic energy. As the potential energy decreases, the kinetic energy increases. The total amount of energy stays the same, while the type of energy changes. This continues as the watermelon falls, until there is no potential energy and only kinetic energy. The moment this happens happens to be the moment that smash, the watermelon hits the ground, breaking apart and making a mess. All that kinetic energy is released by the watermelon as it hits the ground. Some of the energy is absorbed by the ground as heat, some is turned into sound, 
some is transferred from the ground into the bits of watermelon that go flying about the place. We can tell that the amount of kinetic energy released is equal to the potential energy at the beginning, 90 joules, but we can work out the kinetic energy separately if we want. The equation is delta E equals half mv squared, which reads the change in kinetic energy is equal to half the mass times the velocity squared. James measures the velocity of the watermelon, and it's 7.75 meters per second. The kinetic energy then is delta E equals half mv squared equals half times 3 kilos times 7.75 meters per second equals 90 joules. Hopefully you can see the relationship between work, potential energy, and kinetic energy. Some key things to remember. Energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transferred. Potential energy is energy due to position. Kinetic energy is energy due to motion. Work is a force across a distance. Power is work over time.